Today we're talking about black and white chemistry, how to mix your black and white chemistry, and this is all part of the Film Photography Project black and white home chemistry kit that comes with your developer, fixer, tank, canisters, thermometer, film changing bag, all very important. But you know, you may buy this kit and you want to develop your own film and you may, you may be saying to yourself, <laughs> how do I mix, how? This is my method of doing things. I mean, you could come up with your own method of doing things, which is terrific. So even though there are instructions on here, I just felt sometimes it's just easier just to see. How do we get started? Well, the first thing is that we recommend that you mix your chemistry in distilled water. You don't have to, but it's recommended. And I use a square bucket, and in that bucket I have water, and I put my distilled water into that bucket. And you could, if you want to try to run tap water, if you can get it to 100 degrees, that would be great. Currently we're at uh, 60 degrees, so we're far off. We don't want to use 60 degree water to mix our photochemistry because it won't properly dissolve. I use the FPP heat helper, and all this is is a heater that is used for sous vide cooking. So you could find one of these in the FPP store, or you could just go to eBay and look up sous vide heater. S-O-U-S -S space V-I-D-E heater. And I put this in here. Nicey nice. F Fahrenheit. Uh, we want, we'll do 105 degrees. We're currently at 66 degrees. So I put it at 105 degrees because even when the water becomes 105 degrees, the water inside the distilled water container is not going to be immediately 105 degrees. You have to give it the proper amount of time to actually heat up, which is why you will have a handy thermometer. So film is light sensitive. So when you shoot your film in your camera, if you're new to film photography, your film remains in the canister. And in order to develop your film, you will, you will need to take the film out of the canister and get it onto a reel. Each tank comes with two reels. The center piece, which goes in there. Great. Here's your reel. So you need to load the film onto your reel in the dark. And you could do this either in a film changing bag, which if you bought the kit, you would have gotten. Or you can go into a completely black room, like blackout, like say your bathroom. So there's absolutely no light, no light whatsoever, not even a night light. And have your scissor on hand. And I'm just gonna show you how to get the film onto the reel. The most important thing is to have patience and to have enough time to get the film onto the reel. You don't want people bugging you. Boy, are you bugging me? Knocking on the door. When I get, I'm gonna nail. <laughs> You know, like, you know, any of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting bugged now. Whoa, man. In the dark, you are going to put your film onto the reel. Like so. And here on the reel, there are two ball bearings here, which go the film goes over in this slot. And then in the dark, pull my film out a little bit, and then I just ratchet the film onto the reel, keeping it all nice and organized. By the way, this is just a test roll. That's why I'm doing this in light. There's no pictures on here. When you get to your very end, you will feel it. Take your scissor and you take your film and cut it. Yeah. <laughs> and you Put it back there, good. It's on, on your reel, put it in your tank. If you have a second roll, do the same thing. If not, I usually just put it in the tank, even if it's blank. Put your cover on your tank, like so. Put your cap on. Now once you do this, and your film's in here, it's light tight, you can go into the light and you could develop your film in light, how exciting. We're at 105 degrees, and you know what? Let's see the temperature of the water, our distilled water. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Folks, 
you have to, uh, I'm serious, you have to be patient. Do you see how, like we expect everything to just snap your finger. Do you see how long it's taking to get that up to temperature? Take my uh, containers with my funnel and I put about half of it, fill about half of it with distilled water. Number two. And now I'll take my distilled water and put it back in the hot water. Always good to have a bunch of paper towels around, very important. Uh, with your funnel, you do want to dry it out if you're going to be using your funnel to pouring your chemistry, which I'll demonstrate in a second. Always great to have a Sharpie on hand because, you know, these uh, disposable plastic one liter containers uh, are very handy, but you can also just toss them. So very important to label developer D76 fixer. I also keep them together as a set and I always put the date. One liter home chemistry, you can get 10 to 15 rolls of 35 millimeter per set or six months, whichever comes first. Now this is powered chemistry. What you don't want to do once you open it is you don't want to create a cloud plume. You don't, <laughs> you don't want to breathe this in. So you want to be careful. So wear a, either wear a mask or just be very careful and try to keep the, the cloud level down. You take your scissor and you cut it. There's our chemistry. Now, if you're feeling daring, which I am today, it also avoids using a, a funnel. I mean, what you could do is just use the funnel, pour your chemistry in here, it'll go right in. But then you will have to clean and dry your funnel in between the developer and the fixer. I'm going to be a daredevil and pour it just this, this method. Oh, look at that. The faster you pour it, the more of a dust plume you will get. So just try to do it like, you know, gently. I've received emails from folks saying, oh, hey, can I mix like a small amount? No, the answer is <laughs> yes, no. Um, the container, the powder is one liter and it's designed to mix one liter. It's, it's designed to mix all at once. Okay. Very good, you discard this. Keep it away from children or pets, of course. And the chemistry needs to dissolve in your water. So I'm just gonna leave this for now and we're gonna move on to our fixer. Uh, by the way, this chemistry is also available in gallons, gallon size here at the Film Photography Project, or filmphotographystore.com if you want to mix up more film than let's say 10 to 15 rolls. Okay, here's our fixer. I take my scissor. I'm going to, what am I going to do with it, John? Cut it. <laughs> okay, here is our fixer. Once again, you could use a funnel or you could, you know, be a rebel. I'm going to rebel it up. <laughs> you don't want to, if you start, if it starts spilling all over the friggin' place, just stop and use the funnel. Oh, look at that. That's good. Good yeah, nice and slow. Remember to send your people away. You don't want people bugging you. You're kidding me, boy! Are you? And don't fudge around with this stuff. I mean, stuff. You know, I know it may sound silly, but like, you can't drink it. Like, if you're in a dorm, like, just tell people to like f off. Like, you know, don't touch it. <laughs> you know, skull and crossbones. Yeah, yeah. You, this is not stuff to mess around with. That's it. Okay, good. Discard it. Same thing, got your fixer. And you see why it's important to fill only half the container because like there was so much fixer powder that it raised the level. So you wanna only- Placement. Yeah, oh yeah, it's like science. Yes, yeah, science! A lot of folks email me like, oh hey, blah, 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 my chemistry's not dissolved. That's because like the word of the day is patience. Like, you can't just mix it and start developing. You have to mix your chemistry and then, you know, go watch an episode of Columbo or something. Like, like go do something because it, it needs to fully mix. So now I'm going to take our water, which is still hot, and we're going to top it off. And since we didn't contaminate our funnel, we could use our funnel. 
whenever you're uh, capping your chemistry, you especially with these uh, containers, which I highly recommend. If these are just one liter water containers. You just squeeze out the excess so you have no air trapped because you don't want your chemistry oxidizing. Oh boy, oxidizing. And now you want to, you know, come back every 10 minutes and mix it up. Ditto on the fix. Squeeze out all the extra. Great. Okay. Congratulations, you've just mixed your chemistry. What else? Really fast. N once your chemistry is fully mixed, it's time to develop your film. So when you put your film in your tank, the first thing you want to do is uh, do a water, a water rinse with your film. And you would put water into your tank until, and you put enough water till you see the water coming to the very tip, tippy of this inner hole here. And then do a water wash. Uh, you could use the swizzle stick to agitate. That's what this is for, like so. Water wash in the sink, pour out the water. You may notice the water is discolored. That is the dyes that are on the film. Do another water wash, same thing. Pour it out, you'll see less dye. Water wash, I usually do three water washes or until the dye disappears. Then you put your developer in. You may say, well, Mike, how long do we need to develop the film? Well, that is, uh, that is a good question. You will need to base it on what type of film you're developing. Head over to the massive dev chart online. Just Google that. And then you will see a, a handy dandy chart where you could dial in the type of developer you're using, which is D76, the type of film you're using. And then you'll see a chart and it will say stock solution, which is using this straight without diluting it. And that's what I... That's what I use. I use stock solution as your developer for the amount of time prescribed. Then you will pour the developer back into your canister and you can reuse it. If you see other formulas that say something like one to one or one to 10, those are dilutions. And that would mean you would take your D76 and you would dilute it in another container and then when you're done developing, you would throw that away. So let's keep it simple. And I keep it simple. I just use stock solution. Because then it's reusable. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about math. I don't. And easy peasy. Fixer. Uh, so you use your developer. Use your developer. Prescribe time. Pour it back. Then you do a water stop bath. Water. Pour it out, water, pour it out, fixer. Fixer is usually six, seven minutes, you know, doing the swizzle stick every 30 seconds on both. When you're done with your fixer, pour it back, water rinse, pour it out, water rinse, and then you could open up your can, inspect your negatives, and then you will need to wash your negatives for another 20 minutes in running water. Or you can use something that's called the FPP archival wash that saves water time. This may seem all very complicated. It's not. And like you do this a few times and you will be the expert. That's really it. And once your film is developed, then you could scan it. You could scan it using your smartphone, using the Lomography scanner, the negative supply scanner with a digital SLR or get yourself an Epson V800 scanner. The first two options are available right here at the filmphotographystore.com. That's it for this video. And um, well, here's some, here's some images that were developed with this very chemistry that we mixed up today. Comment down below or Michael at filmphotographyproject.com. See you soon. So exciting.